Hello, how are you doing? I hope this finds you very well. I apologise for the change of scenery today. It is noisy both in the house and out of the house and since it's so warm, I figured why not try and sit outside. So let's fingers crossed that the background noise isn't too obnoxious. <laughs> um, yeah, I hope you're doing well. It's been really nice to be back filming again and kind of with a, again, fingers crossed, more consistent schedule getting to share all the things that I've been making. There has been loads. Um, I just thought I'd point out little Audrey who has taken the swing, which is why I'm sat on a camping chair. Couldn't dare take it from you, could I? She's so cute. I thought I would share some more finished projects. I will put them on after I finish recording today and insert the footage. This is a reminder for me to do it and if I haven't done it, Today, I'll do it tomorrow before I edit because it is our happy anniversary today. It's later on in the day than I would normally record, which means that I actually have a lovely cold drink rather than a hot drink. It does have a bit of caffeine in it, so um, again, while I'm recording a bit later, I collected some elderberries on Sunday and had to work in the warehouse on Monday, so I didn't have time to make my syrup that I wanted to make. I wanted to let any creepy coolies escape and then I needed to wash them and things. Uh, so this morning I made elderberry syrup but I added some chai, some masala chai in particular because chai just means tea, um, instead of just adding a bit of cinnamon or cloves and an orange like I would normally and it's particularly good. It's got a little bit of caffeine in it but not loads. I think I used like two teaspoons for the whole 300 ml of elderberry a syrup that I made. It's very nice cold and I'm very excited to have it warm in the winter to keep me cosy. I also have some water for hydration because I have a feeling that I'm gonna get warm out here so I'm trying not to frown. I can see you still. Um, yeah, loads to share. I don't have all of my knitting still. Um, there's a couple of projects that I've been working on that I've, I've not bought out just because they've not moved on enough or there's not much to show yet. But I do have some finished objects and one of them I will put on for you because I shared it last week. I'm not going to like talk about it again too much but this is the first of two sweater vests that I made. Uh, this is knitted in Daughter of a Shepherd Ram Jam in the colour number one from the 2016 clip uh, and I didn't show you it on so I will go and put it on for you and show you what it looks like. happy with this one. This only used 150 grams of wool. I self-drafted it. Um, I might do a little post on Ko-fi, Ko-fi, Lo-fi, coffee, whatever you want to call it, um, talking about how you know I kind of came to the conclusion of where I wanted to be with the sizing. It's, it's not for everyone but I'm, I'm really happy with it. You can have that little laundry. But this is the one that I didn't share and this is finished finished. I have woven in all but the sneaky end that's just poked out I think and I have blocked it. I say blocked, I gave it a wash. I didn't do any stretching of it or anything like that. Um, but yeah this was designed, designed, I came up with this and drafted it myself. I knew very much how this fibre behaved now since I'd already knitted this version and this is the same clip, it's 2016 clip from Daughter of a Shepherd's on the Ram Jam base. And this is colour number two so it's slightly darker. Um, and I had, again I had three skeins of this one and I wanted something more oversized this time so I wanted I had quite specific ideas in my head. I wanted one that I could put over dresses in the winter that was a bit less zhuzhi than my mohair version, like mohair sweater vests that I've got. 
and I wanted one oversized one that had a little bit more interest but a really simple shape almost like a I don't know, a paper bag, <laughs> uh, but a really simple shape, something that didn't shape with me at all, just sits. Um, I did do a little bit of shaping on it, which I'm very pleased with uh, in, in terms of short rows. So I'll show you. I'll show you. I should really sit that more that way, but I wanted you to be able to see a little kitten. A little kitten. Maybe I'll go this side. We are professionals. So I cast on the back stitches. I picked up for each shoulder, increasing as I went. I did a few increases on the outer edge too. This time I wanted it to start a lot thinner at the top, a lot more narrow, so it it kind of showed my t-shirts a bit better or tops that I'm wearing. Um, and then increased out. I maybe have increased a little bit too much, but I did want it to have quite a spacious underarm area mostly for layering purposes then I can put thicker layers underneath it if I wanted to be a bit playful um, once I joint it in the round so I joint the front knit flat for a little bit and then joint in the round I added some cables I really like it it's very simple um, I then knitted in the round until I was uh, happy and wanted to do a split in the hem so I consciously did a panel in the centre that had the knit two for my knit two pearl two ribbing that I was going to do. And then I added some short rows to give it just a little, a little, little bit of shaping, which I was, I was very happy with. Um, I've started to do it quite a lot on my items. I don't know if it will show very well, yeah it does. So it's a bit more subtle in the front, so I think just a few sets of short rows and extra ones in the back just to make it a little bit more obvious and then a bit more knitting and a bit more ribbing I picked up for the stitches around the collar and the shoulders and it's great I'm happy with it It is not the right weather to be wearing this right now, but I have already worn it. I actually wore it with a mesh top and some sort of fitted patterned capris. And I felt like it was just just edgy enough while still being quite traditional. Kind of leaning into the whole farm emo thing again, I guess. But this is a really lovely fibre. Um, it's, it is soft but it is toothy, it's really bouncy um, and it, it, it did smell very sheepy and it's kind of lost that with just the one wash. Um, there's a little bit of veg matter in there but again that kind of makes me happy, it's, it's like a sign that it's from nature. <laughs> um, yeah, not really much else to say, I will, like I said, I think I'll do a little Kofi post, um, just make it public so that just so you can see like the sketches that I did and how I kind of came to the conclusion of where I did might help someone might help you feel braver adding modifications into things to make them how you want because um, I think that's that is the joy of knitting isn't it it's making exactly what you want and being able to alter alter patterns or alter ideas to make them just how you want oh, elderberry um, so yeah super ready for autumn um, I was starting to get all autumny and then we've had two days of 30 degree heat it's always it's always the way but I'm not gonna turn off the pumpkin spice candles that I've been burning so we are doing limited knitting this week I did promise more fiber talk and that is exactly what's going to be happening say fiber I mean spinning and fiber um, but the next one I knitted and you have to forgive me for this 
ghastly looking ball of yarn I have shoved the last of the other ball inside it and then wrapped it up again <laughs> but this is Noro in the colour 2109 which is I don't know I kind of like fun names it seems a shame to just number them but I guess it's easy um, <laughs> So it is 10% wool, 45% mohair, and 45% silk. It is a DK weight yarn, and it has long colour changes if you've never seen it before. Um, it's a really nice yarn to work with. I am, I've, I was very happy with it. I know that it's not for everyone, but I really enjoyed knitting with it, and I'm quite looking forward to making maybe a hat or maybe another bit of colour work with this. But I used it for the Warp and Weft Raglan, which is a pattern by Jessie May that is in testing. It is due to be released really soon. I think around the middle of September, I want to say. Um, I finished mine a little while ago and I just haven't got around to sharing it. But also I didn't want to share it, you know, too early and everyone be like, oh no. We're well, sharing this when no one can have it, but it's coming. It's really soon now, so that's good, right? Um, and I'll show you. I knitted mine using both this and Drops Nepal in black. So I don't have that to share with me because I, I actually put it away into my wool pantry. But you can imagine it's a wool and alpaca blend yarn. It's I've shared Drops loads. Hopefully. Hopefully it's okay that I haven't shared it. But here she is. I will insert the footage either of <laughs> of me wearing it when Alex took some photos, some photos, or me wearing it again inside. I'm really happy with this. I have a few things that I would change uh, if I were to knit it again, but I knit the smallest size. I only needed 2.7 balls of Noro, which is a bit of a shame that I ended up buying the extra skein and not needing it, but it, you know, it's always better to have it and not run out if possible. Um, but I did, I didn't anticipate to have 1.3 skeins left uh, so it doesn't use too much yarn um, even as you go up because of the nature of the texture um, at least I don't think so it is still heavy it is like it is meant to be a worsted weight jumper and because it is it's I can't even think but it's got to be you know half a kilo um, which I think is unnecessary for this style of jumper which is probably why I would continue knitting the elf mail if I'm just being completely honest um, it's fingering weight I modified it to be DK weight successfully and it's got a similar similar vibe um, I did knit it to pattern I adjusted the sleeves so I did the increases at the rate suggested but I had to modify them to be shorter uh, Jessie has ended up changing that in the pattern so it is shorter now anyway but I do have quite little arms um, it turns out I think my legs are probably longer than Alex's but my upper half is a lot smaller so like we're like an inch an inch and a half maybe two inches at a push like difference in height but the difference between my legs and my arms is quite <laughs> significant learn something new all the time um, I don't I don't love this neckline, and that's just being honest. I still really like it, I'm happy with it, but I don't love it. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that stitch, there's a bit of a funny thing here, but I don't know. And then I have a solution to this inside, so it'd be totally reversible. 
um, and it might just be my knitting style was a bit sloppy but I'm not that happy with how this bit is um, and the solution would be to do ladder back jackrad which I've talked about quite a lot so I'm not going to today but it's a very simple technique that is very handy for making things reversible or doing long floats in colour work so if you wanted to have long floats it's a really handy technique especially with mitten season coming up it's a technique worth adding into your little knitting knitting toolbox but overall I do really love it I'm happy with the item I'm gonna wear it loads I'm really chuffed with the colours I was worried that I was gonna end up being really pedantic and breaking the yarn loads and making the repeat shorter on the sleeves I didn't end up doing that I'm quite happy with the how it looks I like that it's similar like it's just similar enough but it is clear that it's definitely a handmade item like that they're, they're not they're definitely not identical but I don't think it's it doesn't it's not off-putting which I was worried that it might be so yeah really happy with this one in the end I would just make it so it was totally reversible because um, the inside's nice it's just one by one um, you you don't knit it you don't purl everything there's a little bit of purling color work at the beginning but otherwise you turn it inside out and carry on get away <laughs> yeah I think I were to do this again and I say I probably wouldn't just because I, I love the elf mail so much and like I said it's lighter but if I ended up knitting uh, spinning thick enough fiber I might be inclined to, to knit this as a gift and do a, a hand spun gift project for someone because um, I do think this lends itself to hand spun yarn Think it would be very fun to do fractal spins and some gradient spins and things and put it into this jumper. Yes, pondering. Um, I've just realised I didn't say I probably forgot because it's one that I designed and I don't love talking about that stuff but I designed it. It was my first ever pattern. I still wear this thing quite a lot. It has a halter neck and it has a little split back so the two halves Go like, and it's good when it's hot and you want to wear knitwear still <laughs> um, I also dyed up this yarn it is a yak silk base and I called this colour sunshine type inspired by a band called Turnover who I really love we listened to Peripheral Vision yesterday on the way into work um, I, if you don't know I have gone from working three jobs being chronically ill, unable to work to now doing knitting and fibre things mostly full time and helping my husband in the company he works for uh, in London on a Monday. So I have one day of week where I'm guaranteed work which I really enjoy doing and getting an extra day with Alex is really nice. Um, but today's our wedding anniversary of th three years uh, which also feels fun to be like oh yeah everything's full circle. I listened to this in the car yesterday and this is, this is what it's from. Um, yeah I, I really I'm really happy I still love this piece um, it was inspired by a set of tiles that I saw when we were in a place called Caligao down it in Spain on is it Menorca it's Menorca um yeah spinning done loads I've been enjoying it uh, I have spun both on my drop spindle and on my pippy uh, Pippi Polly. She is a, a 70s wheel, handmade in New Zealand. She's quite cool. If you've not seen her before, I'll try and put in a little bit of footage of me spinning. Um, which first? This is Ceiling McWheelie Fibre Art Bat 
Um, it was actually two fiber art bats, so there's 200 grams here that I was lovingly gifted by my friend Hannah. They are leather worker and all round crafter and tried to pick up spinning but has too many hobbies and kindly gifted me the art bats. I had a nice time spinning these. I did a bit of the spinning on this at lovely Marina of the Marina Skewer podcast house um, and by the time I left I really wanted to get this off of my wheel so that I could cut like start spinning the next project um, but I really enjoyed this I didn't expect to like how the yarn turned out so much they're just they're not colors I dislike I like them uh, it really reminds me of both Christmas and my like bedroom when I was a, like preteen at my fa family home which is weird um, but it that's probably why it, it reminds me um, and I think it's about a sport sport weight I was aiming for something slightly thicker uh, sport weight some of it veers into DK which was kind of more what I was hoping for I do have hello that was a vicious buzz. <laughs> um, I I do have the yardage and things noted down somewhere, but I can't for the life of me find them. Um, the excuse you, um, distracted by the creatures running around the the garden. I ended up doing a two ply. I tried not to be. I tried not to crush the air out of it, so it is a little bit bouncier than previous spins, which is exciting, um, but still quite, <laughs> quite spun. Um, but yeah, this is this is some yarn. do think it would make a good elf mail or even one of the warp and weft fests. I'm still not sure, it hasn't told me quite what it wants to be yet, but part of me wants to give it back to Hannah, but I also don't want to overwhelm Hannah with more knitting to have to do, because they haven't been knitting loads lately. But we'll see. I'll maybe send a picture and ask before I put it into my, my wool pantry. Um, and I did, because I finished that, I got to start my fibre that I'm prepped with Marina. which looked different to this. Um, I prepped it into little nests to spin from, and this way, because it's all prepped, I can just pick out whichever nugget I want to knit uh, to spin with um, as I go, and I can kind of be a bit choosy about colours. So when we prepared this, I had 200 grams, no, yeah, 200 grams of Romney, which was from a lovely lady at the Southern Wool Show who let me spin on her wheel, which was the first time I'd ever been on a spinning wheel. Uh, so that's quite special to me. There is some adult mohair in here and some silk. And there is also just 50 grams of Jacob from lovely Kelsey who is knitting the Kabi, who I have cast on a test knit for her and I'm so excited to get going properly. If you know, you know, um, and if you don't, I'll show you next time. Or you can go and have a look at knit Knitting Nikabi's profile on Instagram and have a little look. Um, and I just took it along with me to see Marina and very quickly it escalated into, well, let's just prepare it, let's just do it, let's just dye it, get it ready. Because I had apprehensions about being able to spin a, a jumper's quantity of yarn. Um, 
I think trusting my comfort in my spinning. Um, I don't think I was always quite happy with it. I don't think I've ever had any like, oh, my my spinning's not good enough. It's just I want it to be good enough for the item to last, and I think I was in a good place for that. But I wasn't sure that spinning an all grey or cream quantity of yarn was going to keep me entertained. I specifically wanted to have a blend so that the different fibres kept me entertained and that, like kept me focused, you know, the change of the, the fibre in the hands and the, how you have to behave. Drafting it changes slightly with different fibres, quite dramatically. Um, so we ended up dyeing it, doing our best to get it dry and then carding it on a lovely drum carder that Marina had. Had? Has. Um, and we prepared that all in 24 hours. Uh, I loved it. I was so happy with it. And the car. Car interruption. Uh, we ended up making about 16 bats. Um, maybe even more. But I think it was 16, sort of 25 gram bats. <gasps> Is that an eyelash? No, it's not. I was going to make a wish. Come back to the zone. Um... Yeah, so I I bought it home and in the evenings I very quickly went into it's time to spin not to knit and I ended up turning it into little nests and then turning it into a big hunk of yarn. This is my single ply. Um, I made a few changes to how I normally spin. I am trying not to spin in such a worsted way i'm trying not to let that like squeeze the air out and smooth everything down i'm trying to let it be a little bit airy and have a little bit of moments where there's more <laughs> um there's some bits that i might pick out like that and yeah i'll show you Oh dear. I can't be trusted. <laughs> the grey in there is the Jacob that you can see, and Jacob is one of my all time favourite fibres. <sighs> yeah, I'm quite happy with this spin. I am hoping that we veer more towards the sport DK weight rather than the four ply that I'm usually spinning. Um, I have consciously got thicker with my spinning. Um, it's a process. Oh, there's a big overspun bit there. That's fine. Bless you. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't believe I did this as quickly as I did. I still found it out, so I was averaging at about three, just three little nests a day was my, like, allotted knitting time, and I don't think it took more than half an hour to do that and I just just keep doing them and I'm hoping to start very soon doing the same with this I haven't done much I think I've done maybe five little nests since I've been back from Norway it's not a running race I'm quite enjoying bringing the spinning wheel outside or moving it around the house and sitting spinning Wherever Alex is. <laughs> we could do winky stop, shall we? Come on. <laughs> it's just like that. He's so sweet. So, having returned from Marina's, um, very inspired and having really, really enjoyed. Getting a little bit closer with the fibres, using the drum carder, I had received a small bit of inheritance um, and Marina happened to send me a message to say that Wingham Wool Company or Wingham Wool Work have just released a new batch of hand, like their, their made drum carders. And I was like, I'm never going to do this ever again in my life probably and Alex kept saying you know what you should just do it you, you're enjoying it you've got some fleeces to process and it'll be 
beneficial in the long run. Why don't you just do it? And um, for a little while, I think a week, I was like, mm mm. But I kept thinking about it, and I I like to really be as mindful as I can with those sort of purchases because it's not it's a big investment. Um, but all that to say, I ended up getting it, and I've really loved playing with the fibres and getting closer to the fibres and being able to be a bit more playful and in the long run being a bit more able to blend the fibres that I really want to see together. We know that I love my hair and I like I like a little bit of silk and I love toothy local wools so being able to mix those in the way that I want to see for me is just very exciting and again it kind of spurred me on to do a bit more dyeing. So I do have some dyeing and some natural dyeing to share with you that Alex and I have been doing. So I've been really enjoying it. I'll put a little bit of footage of it in. Um... It's a beautiful piece, they're made really lovely, um, I don't have much technical knowledge yet, but so far, so good. <laughs> you! I so enjoyed doing it, and I specifically did two bats that had Scotland, a bit of silk, and just some merino that I had from a previous project. So one, the bright pink bit of merino came with my spinning wheel, and there was some blue and purple on that. Um, where did that... Oh, I bought some fibre to do a felting project, and it I had a few of the right colours, and a few of the colours were just not appropriate. Um, so they just kind of sat there, and I blended them up into two bats. This is what it is. I spun this on my drop spindle in an evening and a little bit of a morning. Um, oh, it's undoing. Which doesn't make it look very nice, but that's okay. Let's get back in there. There we go. So the first bat, I blended all the colours through together. So I divided it out, not perfectly equally. But I divided my Gotland in half, I divided my Silk in half, and I divided each of the colours that I had in half. And then I blended the first bat, just adding the colours in randomly as I went. And the second bat I added in a gradient, so I could then do a ply. 
uh, two ply with it and then one of the strands would be all the different colours the whole way along and then the other strand would be a sort of gradient throughout and this is this is the outcome uh, I don't know quite if you can tell uh, I guess you can here it's the best I did it while watching a really lovely film documentary called Where You're Meant To Be that features Aidan Moffat who is a wonderful folk singer. I really, really like him. Uh, there's some cheeky songs in there, just a warning, if you do end up going and having a watch or listen to the album that is of the same name. Um, and it was just a really nice, cosy evening and I'd done a bit of knitting and my hands wanted a break and I was like, if I put another spinning project on my book then will I be sad because I had this one on the go already so actually no I think having different things to work and different especially as makers like I really do want to look after my hands um having something different to do is important so I did and yeah I applied it on the drop spindle too again I was trying to be more open with the fiber keeping it a little bit more squishy and I think I've succeeded. This is definitely slightly thicker. Again, I don't know where my tags have gone. These did have tags, um, but there is about 100 grams of fibre here, as opposed to the 200. But yeah, this is really fun. I Again, I don't know what this should be. I almost thought this should be a hat for a little one, or a baby jumper for a tiny one. I don't know. This also reminds me of a couple of my pals, like Sarah of Sarah Kareen Knits. It might not be your colours, but it, it definitely reminds me of you. And I love you if you're here. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll focus it on her for a moment. Oh, oh, you can't. Oh, Whoa. is this going to be a postman for us? That would be cool. Alex is waiting on a parcel. Did the courier wake you up? <laughs> uh, yeah, I have to, I haven't shared, I never know quite what to share, but I really enjoyed spinning the Gotland and the silk in this um particularly the merino's fine i think i was, i was kind of like i've done enough merino spinning after doing this but combine it with a bit of Gotland and a bit of silk and it was lush um Gotland is really lovely i love the smell i love the luster of it it is a very nice blend uh, a very nice fibre and I think what I might do is I've got a bit left and I might do some dyeing on it because it's got that grey heatheriness. I think I guess it will behave similar in colours to sort of um, yak. Which is quite exciting. Why is it why is it not used more? It's got such a lovely luster and this has got quite a nice halo to it too. And then finally, I have, I had started another project on my drop spindle. I did this one on a slightly heavier drop spindle that I was going to pass on as well, but it's actually very handy to have one that can be kept free um, for trying fibre blends when I'm playing with my drum cutter. So I'm going to keep it. Um, I thought initially that was a bit selfish, but it's not. Having two drop spindles is fine, having multiples is fine, you can have as many as you like, but I think I need to limit my projects or I get a little bit in a tizzy, um, but I like choice too. Um, why am I so weird today? I think I've only had half a cup of tea. I made myself a tiny cup of tea this morning. I'm not reliant on tea, I'm not. So this is my, my drop spindle is a Bosworth and it is absolutely the most beautiful thing. It spins for hours and hours. <laughs> okay, that's 
that's a dramatization but it spins beautifully and i decided to finally start spinning this gorgeous manx and silk um, blended bat from Felview fibers carol does absolutely beautiful yarn i was very kindly sent this from mary louise who thank you so much this still like the fact that this is still with me and still bringing me a thank you um and i can't believe i get i guess it, it feels so special this yarn um carol does the most gorgeous blends she really really puts a lot of care into the preparation of the fiber do not use get away do not use the state that my bat now looks like um as a <laughs> representation of her work it honestly it's the most beautifully carded uh fiber that i've ever used it, it, it's so so smooth even though it's in a bat it's just gorgeous um, so blended really really beautifully too uh yeah and this feels very special but i wanted to have a project that was kind of going to be in keeping um i've been working on it for a while but when i knew that i was going to norway i did want a project that was going to be slightly in keeping that felt not necessarily historically accurate but it would blend in without a problem this was a perfect fiber so i ended up finishing the first bat because it was a 100 gram bat divided in 250 gram bats and i have wound it onto a bobbin this is a standard sized ashford bobbin just for just for comparison and this is the size of my pippy one This is a lot of yarn, um, so I, I have done the, the first half and I'm going to, as is predictable at this point, do another two ply. I really hope to learn, I think the Navajo method gives three plies but you don't need three, you know, don't need the extra bobbins. So I'm going to have a little look into that some more. My brain's not really been in the land of plying but I, I think it's something I would like to look at. I'd love to do a four ply but a three ply would be like the perfect edge into a nice nice rounder yarn and I, I don't dislike chain plying but I don't love it um, as a process. It's, it's fine but it's not it's not my favorite. Two plies much happier um, so I'm hoping that I'll figure that out in the future so i'm gonna i did the first one and i've done this much of the second one it does get a bit heavy um to be trying to continue spinning but i did get the whole first half on it the first time around so i'm gonna do the same the second time around partly for consistency i don't know if it works like that i don't think it does but this is the fiber isn't she just the cutest um, sorry, I, I'm getting distracted by looking at her in this, the, the viewer today. I'm so sorry. Uh, do my best in the future, promise. Um, but it is absolutely gorgeous. It is, I, it's undyed. It's got a slight oatmeal-y warmth to it. And I don't know if I'm going to ever dye this. I don't know what the yarn's going to be. I just know that it's going to be something special will be because it feels so luxurious. It has to be luxurious. It is luxurious. Anything with silk is super luxurious. It's not a, it's not an easy process. Um so yeah. Uh I ended up doing a bit more nail binding when I was in Norway and a bit of knitting and just did a little spinning in the daytime, kind of early on. I did I did want to take a spinning project with me and I'm glad I did. It's got a little bit of Norway in it now, which makes it all the more dearer to my heart. So yeah. That's that's where I'm at. I've got I got so much to share still from 
weaving. I've done a bit of weaving. I've done a bit of upcycling. Done starting to do a bit more whittling like I said I had to be careful of my hands so when I was doing it the first time back here in the UK I'm not sure our knife is as sharp as lovely how was um, and I kind of got that feeling of or the lack of feeling much like if you have picked up a guitar or bass for the first time in a while you know and you've, you've played too much and it's kind of loses feeling so I've made myself um, a little a little leather <laughs> uh, thimble kind of thing which has been helping I still haven't done very much but I've done a bit of whittling Alex has done quite a lot of whistling and he loves it I really like it I just know that I can't be trusted to do it when I'm not supervised and if Alex is home to supervise me he's probably whittling <laughs> so there's not much opportunity to do it there has been, like I said, some natural dyeing, some acid dyeing and over dyeing of items to make them just a little bit more wearable. Um, yeah, so there's still more stuff. I'm quite excited. I would like to, hopefully you're interested, I'd like to do a separate video on some of the Viking knit makes in particular, the shoes. So it will not be an instructional video because it was my first time trying and they they could definitely be improved and I, I, I really like that I have these we both have these pair of shoes that are totally usable, wearable, comfortable really I'm quite surprised um, I, I'll talk about them more but it's also a really good starting point and I really want to make another pair as best I can and maybe keep these ones for in the house as alternative to slippers and then have a nice pair for hopefully maybe doing some some more events because it was really fun and getting to know some reenactors either here or just moving to Norway and hassling, hassling that group because it was wicked um yeah so hopefully you're interested in some of those if not I'll, I'll have more knitting to talk about so hopefully you come back for that if you want I don't know why I'm like all of a sudden all shy. Sorry. I don't know. She's, she's in a funny mood. So hopefully there'll be some footage of that to share with you. Yeah, we went for a little waddle in the park. Alex has been collecting oak galls for his natural dyeing. He's got some drying out in the sunshine now. Um. I think, yeah, we went to a another Viking event last week, so I'll put some footage of that in the end for you to see. That was really fun, it was quite nice to go and see the differences and the similarities. There was a natural dyer we talked to, there was a lovely craftswoman who made everything from like knitted jewellery to uh, nail binning, weaving, she did finger braiding that was really cool uh, so hopefully that will be nice for you if you fancy sticking around for a bit of that yesterday a big big milestone I'm I think I say it quite frequently I'm very grateful for the progress in my health I am someone that is quite uh, intuitive and like very hyper aware of what's going on in my body um, so to feel like I'm still getting better is I can't I can't be more grateful but yesterday it was another milestone because I managed to go to a class I was both brave enough to go but I went to my first yoga class which was really nice to not be guiding myself or you know using a video at home it was nice to go and feel other people's energy and to be taught in a different way it was really really special uh, so I'm hoping to go again next week we'll see uh, yeah, I, I'm just waffling at you, but anyway, I love you. I hope you're well. Stay well. Love your friends, love your family, love each other, and I hope to see you again very, very soon. Take his weapons! All his weapons!
weapons. The shield. 